بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الأحباب good manners good أخلاق those Islamic values that Allah wa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have explained for us and made clear for us through the, throughout the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those morals, those values, akhlaq, are a means to get to Jannah. Those morals or those values, <clears throat> they're also a means to gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And which one of us is not in need of the love of Allah Azza wa Jal? Many people claim to love Allah, but they don't illustrate that by their actions and deeds and their statements on their tongues. And may Allah forgive us all of our many shortcomings. Ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ayyul Ahbab, to gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something azim, it's something great. And again, as we mentioned in the previous sitting, that it doesn't come from your color, it doesn't come from your body, it doesn't come from your appearance, it doesn't come from your wealth and possessions, but rather it comes from your taqwa la'izu and it comes from your manners. How you treat other human beings. How you treat the animals even. All of this is a part of our akhlaq. How, we, how our relationship is with uh, other beings in this life. That all makes up a part of our akhlaq and manners. The Prophet ﷺ said, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تلا عنه سئل رسول الله سئل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن أكثر ما يرخل الناس الجنة قال تقوى الله وحسن الخلق وسئل عن أكثر ما يرخل الناس النار قال فم وفرج رواه رواه ترمذي وأحمد وابن هبان وقال ترمذي صحيح غريب وحسن هو للباني في صحيح ترغيب Rahimahumullah Jamiin. May Allah have mercy upon all the Ahla Hadith. It was reported on Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, have mercy upon him and be pleased with him. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Wa sahaba ta wa sahaba ijma'in. He said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked about what will enter the people into paradise. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Salam said, فقال, Fearing Allah, God, God consciousness, meaning staying away from the prohibitions and doing the commandments of Allah Azza wa Jal. Being conscious of your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa Allah wa husn al-khulq. And good manners. This is the shahid. This is the point that I wanted to mention. Is that these good manners are a means to help you get in the Jannah. So never, never underestimate that. And this is a khata, a mistake that we find from some of our brothers and sisters. Is they believe that it is sufficient to claim they follow the Salaf of this Ummah, to follow the Salaf of Sari, Rahimahumullah Jami'an, to call themselves Salafi, and they think that's sufficient. And then they can curse this one, they can speak bad about this one, they can tell lies about this one. Absolutely not. Ayyul the Prophet made clear for us this path, that that's a clear mistake. 
that if you want to follow the Salaf of this Ummah, then you will be striving to gain good manners. On the other hand, do not say and do not believe that because someone has bad manners and their Aqidah in general is, is Sahih and their Minhaj, their methodology is Sahih, this means they have a weakness in their Iman. Perhaps a weakness in their Minhaj, perhaps. But that doesn't negate the fact that they're still from Ahl Sunnah. So you can find a person from Ahl Sunnah who is weak in this area that shows a weakness in their Iman. And they'll be held accountable before Allah's, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. But we don't say, Khas, he's not from Ahl Sunnah because he treats people bad. La. But we rather it would be more correct to say, and it depends on the uh, situation of the particular individual, that this particular individual is very, has some bad manners. May Allah guide us and guide him, or guide us and guide her. But yet, their aqidah and, and so forth is still from Ahl Sunnah, perhaps. So we have to be careful of that on the scale. And the Prophet ﷺ made clear for us that this is the one of the reasons to enter paradise. We can't dispute that. He was asked about what winner the people in the Jannah the most. So it shows us this is the path. This is the path we're talking about. The path to Jannah. فقال فقال تقوى الله وحسن خلق fearing Allah and having righteous manners وسئل عن أكثر ما يرخل الناس النار فقال فم وفرج and then he was asked about what went into the people in the hellfire the most the fem the mouth and the farj the private parts أي الأحباب that shows us that having taqwa and, and, and good manners, akhlaq, righteous akhlaq, is a path to paradise. And at the same time, that same hadith illustrates for us that having bad manners, because what? Using the tongue for haram to lie, to speak about someone without, without ilm, to spread fitna around the communities about so-and-so, to speak and belittle so-and-so who might be a caller to Islam, a caller to Allah Azza wa Jal. And they might be from Ahl Sunnah even. And then you belittle them. These are from Akhlaq Sayyid. These are from bad manners. And these are from sins of the tongue. And that's why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or as illustrated by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he said, Salawat al Rabbi wa Salamu Alayhi, wa su'ila an akhri ma yurkhul an nas an nar, faqal al fim, the mouth. Wafaraj in the private parts, meaning the person couldn't control the private parts. They were masturbating. They were committing adultery. They were committing uh, fornication. Whatever. They were using, doing these things, which are prohibited by Allah Azza wa Jal. Both of those things are things that negate your iman. They be, they take from your iman. Both of those sins, because they're sinfulness, they are ways of. They're the opposite of taqwa. They are taking away from your taqwa. They are reducing your taqwa, showing a lack of taqwa. Because part of taqwa, as we mentioned, and as the Salaf used to say, some of the Salaf, they define taqwa la Azza wa Jal as al-imtithal bi amrillah, which tinab an ma'asiyati. That it is, that taqwa is adhering to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And refraining from the sinfulness. So that shows that wicked manners, because of course we know those are a part of manners too, by not safeguarding your tongue, that has to do with your, your manners, your akhlaq, that that's a part of, uh, uh, of, 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 you know, that negates taqwa. And bad manners are something that will enter the people into the hellfire. And there's so many ahadith that illustrate this. And as we mentioned in the beginning, righteous manners, akhlaq, uh, akhlaq hasan, or hasana, 
سبب في محبة الله لعبده that having righteous manners is one of the reasons to gain a person the love of Allah and may Allah love us and forgive us of our many sins Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us all in Iman and increase us in our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we illustrate it on our limbs and our tongues and of course have it in our hearts Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Fi Kitab al Karim Wa ahsanu inna Allah yuhibbu al muhsaneen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and this is in uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding here this is in Surah Al-Baqarah Qala subhana and be uh, be be righteous or do do righteousness this has to do with your manners this has to do with your akhlaq this has to do with how you relate to others doing good allah commands it and any time allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands something or the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam commands something then that is yufid al wujub al amr yufid al wujub that when there's a commandment in the sharia from the quran or from the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then that is evidence that that thing is an obligation unless there's a sarif unless there's something else in the sharia in the in the uh, in the in the nusus from the quran or from the sunnah to show us that that thing is no longer an obligation that it's mustahab or it is from one of the other ahkam but there needs to be dalil to show that it's not from that so when Allah commands us with something he never commands you with something that's haram he never commands you with something that's bad he only commands you with that which is good and Allah commanded us with goodness and good behavior righteousness and the shahid here in Allah yuhibbul muhsinin verily Allah loves those who do good who loves those who do righteousness akhlaq hasana wa qala aidan Wallah yuhibbul sabirin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, and verily Allah loves the patient ones. Patience is also part of akhlaq, it's a part of good manners. Because a person who doesn't have patience, when they have a problem, they're going to immediately get upset. It's going to be a confrontation, always on the defensive. Going to be like this. May Allah forgive us and, and forgive our brothers and sisters. I mean. But that patience is something that Allah loves. And Wallahu yuhibbul masabirin. And verily, Allah loves those who are patient. So the person who's patient, from Ahl Iman, they're a person who's loved by Allah. And that's what we need to be. We need to have, gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by patience and good manners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al kareem, Inna Allah yuhibbul, uh, Inna Allah yuhibbul muqsiteen. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those people who are just. So having good manners, and all of these are a part of husn al All of these, being patient, doing good deeds, uh, and being just, all of that's a part of akhlaq. They're a part of good manners. And all of those traits are traits that Allah loves, and the person who has those traits is loved by Allah. In Allah yuhibbul muqsiteen. Verily, Allah loves those who are just. So be just. Be just with one another. Be just with, uh, with everyone and with anything. Be just with the animals. Give them their rights. Don't harm them. If you have to slaughter an animal, do it well. Be efficient so that it, it, it receives very little suffering. That you're going to, so that you will, and you do it for the sake of partaking in, for eating uh, from the animal or slaughtering it so that way you can give this as charity or, or zakat or, or what have you. These are the, the ways in which uh, you can be just and good with the animals and exhibit that akhlaq. And the way we deal with one another, the way we deal with ahl bid'ah even, the people who have innovated from the path from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu even you have to deal with them justly. You can't lie about it. You can't say, well, so-and-so's a mubtadi already. He's already 
calling people to misguidance and he's already uh, doing this and doing this, this. So I think I'll add when I talk about him and I'll say that he did this or I'll say that he, he's this or speak about him in this way. No, you have to be just and you have to refute their mistakes and refute their bidah, refute their evil. And you don't have to go beyond that. That's being just. And that's loved by Allah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love us, ameen. And likewise, and this will be the last thing I'll, I'll mention in the sitting, is that righteous, uh, righteousness and righteous manners are one of the reasons to gain, that a person can gain the love of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved those people who were just and the people, he loved who Allah loved. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, Inna, inna man ahabbakum ilayya wa aqrabakum minni majlis in yawm al-qiyamah ahsanukum akhlaqan. Subhanallah. We got to strive to get our, 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 our manners together. May Allah forgive us of our many shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, forgive us all of all of our sins. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayk. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayk. The Prophet ﷺ said, Verily the most beloved to me, the mer verily the most beloved amongst you to me, uh, and the closest to me, in, in, in a sitting, in a gathering, uh, on the day of judgment, will be the best of you in manners. This is a, a hadith, a sahih hadith, ruahu tirmidhi, وَقَالَ حَسَنْ غَرِيبٌ مِنْ هَذَا الْوَجْهِ وَحَسَنْهُ إِسْنَادُهُ عَلَى الْبَانِي فِي سِلْسِلَةَ صَحِيحَةٍ إمام الباني على الباني رحمه الله تعالى may Allah bless him with Jannah Firdaus and all the ulama of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'a he declared that this was a uh, a حسن uh, hadith or نعم حسن صحيح or Hassan, he said it was Hassan. And in this beautiful hadith, the Prophet wasallam said that the most beloved amongst you to me on the day of judgment and the closest to me in a gathering in the day of judgment is those from amongst you have the best manners. So, Ayyul Ahbab, strive your best to have good manners and good conduct with one another and with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way you deal with other people. Strive your best. It's a reminder for myself and a reminder for you. And may Allah forgive us of our many sins and our many shortcomings. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas, with thabat. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and our parents and our families all with the beauty of Islam and the beauty of uh, adhering to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah give us guidance and may Allah forgive us of our sins. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.